Hi everyone, welcome to another Flutter with Engineering webinar. We'll be discussing the bill payment APIs and how you can make the most of them for your business or for your product. So you're welcome everyone. My name is Roti Mio Kumbai and I'm a product marketing manager here at Flutterways. And our speaker for today is Cornelius Ashley Suzuka, who's a developer experience engineer here at Flutterwave. He will take us through the entire process, the, the entire um, webinar talking about the the bill payment APIs, um, the classes, the types, you know, talk about errors, and basically help us understand it properly so that we can make the most of it. Uh, so I'll leave it to Cornelius to introduce himself and will tell us what he does at Flutter as a developer experience engineer and what he does for fun, you know, outside of work. So over to you, Cornelius. Hello, guys. Thanks, Rotin, for the introduction. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Cornelius. I work with the developer experience team here at Flutterway, where we basically just build products and put resources together to help developers and ensure that onboarding their products to Flutterway is as seamless as possible. So we here at Flutterway value developer engagement we value our developers a lot and that's one of the reasons why we're having this webinar trying to discuss how our bill payments work and everything you need to know to you know get started with your bill payments make sure you're properly set up and then you're getting the best experience even after your integration so that being said, I'll just share my screen. So today we'll be talking about why bill payments are important in the first place. We'll be talking about what types of bills we support here at Flutterwave, what categories of those bills um, we also support. We'll be taking a look at how Flutterwave handles the bill payments from a non-technical standpoint. And, and then, then I'll, I'll be making a couple of demos on basically how to make some types of bill payments before talking about what to do when you are having a field response from our APIs or when you are having any issue really with our APIs. So let's just jump right into it. Why bill payments are important. Today, online payments have simplified a lot of services and bill payments is a very critical one. Online bill payments has made it very easy for customers, users of airtime, of data for their mobile devices, internet subscription for modems and offices, and power, right, to make those payments. The facilitation of those payments online, making it easy, makes it an important feature for us here at Flutterwave to talk about and to basically help people adopt at the company. Bill payments are also important because um, from the merchant's point of view, in implementing this feature can help their business. They could end commission on the side. And for product managers, it basically just gives them a lot more product offerings for their customers to have on the same product. So when you think about all these things coming together, you see why we really need to talk about bill payments and why it is important that people not only adopt it, but use it correctly. So what types of bills do we support at Flutterwave? We support airtime bills in Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, and Zambia. Our providers in this region include um, MTN, Glow, Etisalat, which is Nine Mobile now, um, Etel. For Ghana, we support Tigo. In Kenya, we support Airtel, and in Zambia, we support um, we support Zamtel, MTN, Airtel, and Vodafone. For data bundle, we have quite the coverage in Nigeria, Kenya, and Zambia. In Nigeria, we support the major providers, which is MTN, Airtel, Glow, Nine Mobile. In Kenya and Zambia, we support Airtel. For power bills or electricity bills, we support 
EKDC and IKDC Niger, which are the popular distribution, electricity distribution companies here. In Kenya, we support KPLC, and in Zambia, we support Zesco. For cable TV across the continent, we support DSTV, GoTV, StarTime. And the interesting thing is in Zambia, we also support Zuku, which is an indigenous cable TV provider in the region. For internet, right, the internet bills, we only support Nigeria at the moment, but we cover Spectronet, we cover IPNX, we cover Smile too. So this is just a brief overview of what we support as a company. And as you can see, it's a very wide range of different bills covering different markets and different biller types. So how do we how do we actually handle this payment? What happens when you decide as a merchant to make a bill payment We float the wave? The first thing is you will be calling our APIs from your servers. And once we get that response, as a company, we try to resolve your keys. We do this to tie your account to the API response or the request rather, to know who is making the request and to try to start validating that request. Once we can resolve your keys, the next step is to validate the request. So we'll be doing a lot of check-ins, right? We'll be checking if you have the right balance to cover the bill payment. We'll be checking if you are passing the correct details for the right biller, not a situation where you want to make an airtime payment, but you are sending us the biller code and biller details for, for typically um, data bundle or the standard internet subscription. We'll also be checking if um, you can, if the ID that you're sending to us, the recipient of this bill payment, we'll be checking if these guys are valid, if there's no mistake um, in that value you've sent to us. Once we can verify that, yes, you have the balance, the customer ID is correct, and it's actually a valid customer, and the biller details are accurate, we can then forward those um, requests to our providers, depending on which of the biller types you're sending to us. Now our provider deals with this and sends it back to us. So the first thing we do is we check what the provider is sending back to us. What is the status of this response? Are we looking at a successful payments? Did the payment fail? If it failed, why did it fail? So if we're having a successful payment, the flow becomes a lot more simpler. We basically just update the transaction status, tell you, oh, this payment is successful, and send you an API response. And with this API response, you as the merchant or the developer can render a success page to your end users and tell them, oh, the bill payment was completed, and then they can continue with the customer journey on your app. But if we check and we find out that there was a problem on the provider's end and the status actually failed, the first thing we'll need to do will be to reverse the debits while we were validating, right? Once we reverse the debits, we will then update the transaction status to failed so that we're telling you the transaction failed, we're telling you why it failed and giving you tips on what you could possibly do to make sure that a retry will be successful. And then we'll send you that API response for you to either retry the transaction or for you to tell your customer about the cost of the error so they can initiate a retry. So this is how we handle big payments from a non-technical perspective. So I will just jump right into a couple of demonstrations to talk you through how the technicality works and how you can make sample payments. So I have here the documentation and I'll just be talking through the relevant sections so I won't be going through all of them. For you to make a successful bill payment with Flutterwave, from a technical standpoint, there are four steps. 
the first step is for you to get the bill category so that you can get all the required biller details, right? The second step will be for you to validate your customer ID to ensure that the customer details that you're passing to us is correct. So you don't have to go through the stress of going through the whole flow just to find out that your customer detail was not correct. And then you actually initiate the bill payments, which is the critical or most important part of the flow. And you validate the status or you get the final status for the bill payments. So um, to dive into it, I'll just grab this, open up my postman and start the demo. So here I'm doing, I'm going to create a new request to get a bill category, passing in the endpoint from my documentation. I first want to do a demonstration for an airtime airtime payment. So I'll just query the airtime flag, um, give it a query param of airtime, and then set my authorization and the header. So here's some things you should take into consideration. First, for your authorization, you should be passing your secret keys into the authorization header. And then in the body, the content type for the body should be JSON. So just take note of that. Um, so I have this, I can make the call So I'm just going to send this request to see what I get back as a response. Awesome. So I get back um, and I get back an object containing all the villa types that fall into the airtime category. I'm interested in making an airtime payment for MTN. So I'll just look for that, pick out the details and move on to the next phase. So just give me a sec, let me just get MTN. Awesome, so I have MTN. Next will be for me to validate uh, the customer ID I want to pass. So for me to do that, I'll call the validate bill service endpoint and then pass and then pass in the required details. So first thing first, I'll get the endpoints added to my URL. I can see the sorry, I got the wrong endpoints. Yep, I got the right one now. And from the docs, the item code is actually a path variable. So I just need to up update my URL to reflect that. And then I will get my item code from the response here, from the get category response and pass all the required details back into the validate customer ID. So item code for this is this, I'll just copy that. Paste it here. And then add the biller code and customer ID. Square parameters. For the code, I'll pass in the biller code. And for the customer, I'll pass in the recipients. In this case, we're trying to validate a phone number, which will typically be the recipient for an airtime bill payment. So I'll try to resolve my number. I'll 
in the sentence. Oh, I forgot to add authorization in my header, so I'll do that now. Thank you. Yes, send this. So it's telling me it validated successfully. I have no worries. I can proceed to the next stage of my, my bill payment flow, which is to actually make the bill payment. So at this stage, I've been able to get the details I need for the biller. I've been able to confirm that the details I passed into um, the payload is correct. It's actually a valid phone number. All I need to do is to actually make the payment. So I will go to, I'll get the endpoints to make the bill payments. I will add an authorization in my header. I would make the request. So like I said, when you're making a request, don't forget to pass it as a JSON. So I just need to pass the required, the required parameters. For this, I would need country. Country, I will need the customer, the amount, the type, and the reference. So let me just get all those here so I don't forget them. So I'm, I'm just going to pass values into this. For the country, I'm going to pass Niger because it's a Nigerian phone number. Oh, that's not written here. It's the Nigerian phone number that I'm using. So I'll just pass Nigeria, the customer, I'll pass the phone number I needed to recharge. Passing the amount, like so. So for the type, I'll go back to my get bills category and get the type. So for my villa, the type is at time. So I'll just pass at time into my payload. And pass a reference for the transaction. So I'll just call this domain trans one. Okay. So I have this. I will now send this in a way to get a response. Unable to oh. This is a post request. So yes, we have a successful response for this. And I can just wrap this, send it to my front end if I wanted to. And the front end will just like my customer know that that transaction has been successful. But there are some special cases where you have pending status. And it's always a good idea to just get the final status of the transaction. So I'll just quickly do that. 
So we could touch on the four, we can touch on the four stages of this. This is the path parameter. I'll pick up my transaction reference from here and pass it as a value into my path parameter. I will also be updating my headers with the authorization parameter. Okay, so I'll do this. And yes, I can confirm all the details for the transaction. It's successful. So this is basically the whole flow from a technical point of view, especially on the back end. You want to make sure that you have all these steps set up. So you are setting that irrespective of any response or anything that happens, you're covered and you can always pass a meaningful response back to your customers so they have a great user experience. So I'm going to demo two different billers so we have an idea of how the different biller responses would look like. And then I will move to what to do when you're having like field responses. So here I'm not going to get this, I'm going to get data now. Okay, I already verified the phone number that is going to be the recipient. So I'm going to skip that step and just go to typically billing the user. So I'm going to copy the biller type and update the type in my payload. I'm also going to update my reference. And there's something I need to point out here. For the data bundle, we need to ensure that the amount in the get biller response tallies with the amount in your actual payload. So the amount here has to be updated to 200. Right? I'm going to send this. We'll go for the response, and yes, we have the successful response. So let me quickly just show everyone what happens when the amount is lower than what the bill is expecting. You get this error that tells you that the amount must be 200. So that's just a noteworthy point. And now that I have done this, I can just validate. I can validate the status to be sure. Just take this. Yes, so everything works fine. Let me demo, let me demo a power villa so you can see what that looks like also. Awesome. So I'm going to try to demo IKDC bill payments, which is one of the popular bill payments here in Nigeria. Okay, I have it here. I'm going to try to Enter my, my meter number. So the recipient in the case of making a power bill payment is, is going to be the meter number, right? It's not going to be the phone number of the recipient, it's going to be the meter number. For cable, it's going to be the smart card number for DSTV, Star Times, and Go TV. Just wanted to point that out.
Okay, so I'm trying to enter my data to my customer ID seven eight six five three Just need to get the item code for this pillar. So I've updated this. Let me try to validate if the data number is a good one. Huh, it's saying invalid customer ID. Let me cross check that 450, 53, 87, 28, 65. Okay, okay, thanks. So I skip a six here. Let me try that. Awesome. So we have the right bill, biller details. With this, I can just go ahead and charge, charge this. Let me get the type. So this is this is it. Gonna be this, update this. So I've updated the type. Let me grab my meter number from here. So we'll just send this back. Wait for the response. Yes. We have a successful payment for this. I can basically just try to query the status, get a full response. And there's one thing I'd like to point out for the power bill payments. If you take a good look at the response, you will notice that the token is returned for the payment. It's returned as the extra. So if you want to return it back to your user, you can just get the status, the latest status of that bill payment and return data that extra to your front end as the token. So that's pretty much how you would handle bill payments on your back end. Let's talk about what to do when, what to do when the bill payment fails. So why do bill payments fail in the first place, right? Uh, I've shared a couple of instances, but just to add more cases, so you have better understanding, one major issue is insufficient funds. So when the fund in your available balance on your dashboard is lower than what you're trying to charge for, that bill payment is gonna fail. So what you can do in that event is to make sure you top up your wallet and retry the payment. So say you've been doing a couple of bill payments and you get this response, you basically just need to top up and proceed with bill payments. We've seen invalid customer ID. What this simply means is we can't resolve that customer ID as a real ID. So it's either it's not a real meter number or it's not a real phone number or a real smart card number. Any of the cases it might be, it's best to recheck like what I did during the demo 
recheck and ensure that you're passing in the right customer ID details. And the last cause, although it's really a cause, is when we have a downtime on our provider's end. So when this happens, we send you a response, tell you the transaction failed, and then what you can do in this situation is just retry. So these are why bill payments fail, basically. Either you're passing in an amount that is larger than your available balance, or you're passing an invalid customer ID, or there's a downtime, or there's something wrong with one of the details you're passing as your payload parameters. So what can you do when you don't get a success response? If you're not getting a success response, we only have two other responses, right? It's either you're having a pending response or you're having a field response. So let's talk about a pending response, right? What do you do when you have a pending response? The first thing you do is to basically keep pulling your, basically keep pulling the get status endpoints. So keep trying, we're trying the status of that transaction till you get a final status. Because what happens in some cases is that we might not get quick response immediately and we'll just give you a pending response to tell you this is still being processed on our bill as end. So you can keep querying the status to find out whether it was successful or failed. And when you eventually get the final status, you update on your end. So an instance where I made a bill payment and it's pending and you can't tell your customer the final status, it's always best practice that once you get that final status, you let the customer know. Or even in cases where you tell the customer that the bill payment is being processed, they should give you some time to process it. Let them know when there's a final status. If it's successful, let them know. If it's failed, also let them know and give them a reason why it failed. Maybe it could be try, maybe it's invalid ID or something's wrong with the payment details they passed. To wrap up this final status that we're gonna talk about is a failed status where you just get failed, either invalid customer ID or some error or code or an amount is invalid, any error message basically. What you need to do first is to confirm that you were not debited for the transaction. That's the first thing. Confirm that the funds are in your account. If that, those funds are not in your account, you can reach out to the Flutter team, right? And skip the remaining steps and just reach out to the Flutter team. But once you confirm that, the next thing you need to do is try to debug your payload, right? Based on the error message, what is wrong with the payload I'm passing? And what stage am I getting this error from? This invalid customer ID might be coming from the charge, but if I implemented the validate um, bill, which is to validate the customer ID, I would have known about this. So if I'm getting this at that point, I would need to check what is wrong with the ID I'm passing in as a customer ID. Are there too many digits? Am I duplicating digits? Am I passing the right digits? I'll need to confirm with the customer and ask the customer to double check and confirm this. Once I can do that, I can then retry and ensure that I am getting a resolved customer ID before I proceed to charge the bill payments. So recheck the request payload. If you check in and there's nothing wrong, there's a good chance that's coming from our providers. You can retry at a later time, maybe after five, 10 minutes, retry the bill payments, you will get a different response. But if you're not getting a different response, then you can contact the Flutter with support team. So with this, um, I think I have gone through everything you need to know to get started with bill payments and basically handle some of the issues you might encounter when integrating bill payments into your products. So I'll take questions now. All right. 
Uh, all right, thank you everyone. Um, so we have like a lot of questions for you, Cornelius. I, I hope you can take all of them. So uh, first of all, we have, what is your maximum time for a successful bill payment? So that would depend on the biller, right? Typically, all bill payments would close in a couple of seconds max at worst case scenario. But sometimes when we're having issues with our billers or they're not able to resolve and send a response back, it might take a while. But one thing we do at Flutterwave is we try to close all bill payments and ensure that all bill payments are resolved with a final status within the day. So a couple of seconds max, you get the successful response as long as you're passing the correct payload. All right, so let me go to the next question. So someone said, does Flutterwave allow for free use of their payment gateways if we use their APIs for vending? So I really would not understand what you mean by vending, but free use of APIs, I don't think you pay for our APIs. Our APIs are absolutely free at the moment. On V3, you just need your PCI, DSS certification to charge cards, but aside the card endpoints, all other APIs are free to use. You can check out our documentation. I'll share a link to the docs in the chat box so you can play around. We have an amazing playground for you to test you know, parameters, put in your values and see how these APIs respond and behave before you even start your integration. So yes, our APIs are free. You don't need to pay for them. Okay, same, same take, take another question. Thank you very much, Cornelius. Um, so someone says here, why is BEDC not supported within your electricity disco API? So BEDC is the Benin um, electricity distribution company. I think, yeah, that's BEDC. So yes, currently we don't have an integration to this provider, but I'm sure it's something the team will be looking into. When we have an integration, the developer experience team will communicate to the developer community so everyone is aware and will share resources on how you can successfully make BDC electricity payments, basically. So thank you for raising that with us. All right, thank you once again for you. I'm good to another one here. This is, do you have a sandbox on a postal collection for it? Don't know what for. So yes, we have Postman collections. For Sandbox, you would need to create your own environments once you have those collections and add your keys. So we can share that. You can reach out to us um, either on Twitter or Slack or via email and a member of the team will share that with you. All right, All right. thank you very much, Kanye. I'm good to another one here that says, all right, how will someone without the ability to program go about this? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get that. How, how, how will, will someone without the ability to program go about this? Okay, so that would be really challenging, but we have, we have a couple of plugins that abstract some of these APIs. You can check out what plugin works for the platform you're building your product with. If it's an e-commerce website, you can check out all our plugins, either on WordPress, WooCommerce, and see if that is available on those plugins. We have some bill payments integrated, although not all. And if it's something that you would like the team to typically add, we can basically just talk with you, walk you through how you would add that to some of those plugins. But for what I demo today, it's best you have some programming knowledge to implement on your backend. All right, so we have about 
um, 13 questions to go, thereabout. <laughs> so, yeah, keep it All right, so next one says Can vendors using your APIs have free access to your payment gateways, like the customer dedicated or reserved email bank accounts? Did you get a question? Okay. Yes, yes. I don't know why anyone would have the, <laughs> the notion that they would need to pay for these things. Fine, we might charge transaction fees, but the APIs themselves are free, right? They are free to use. If you would like to make use of our pay with bank transfer API, you can, it's free. If you want to create virtual accounts with us, you can. That API is also free. So, Rotimi, I don't know if you can help share the link to the documentation in the chat box so people can go through what they have access to with Flutterwave. But short answer, yes, you can. All right, so I'm going to share that very soon. Just give me a second. Um, let me share that now. So I'll put it in the chat box now. I want to go there. You have it. I've also put the link to our developer Slack channel, the developer Slack community. If you want to join, there you can you know get updates and regularly discuss with our developers um, whenever you have issues or you want to resolve anything at all. So that's the link to join the developer Slack, and that's the link to the documentation page. So you can check that out. The so next question here says, "Will this tutorial be posted?" Yes, Abiodu. This tutorial will be posted. Uh, we'll put on our YouTube channel as soon as we are done you know, with the recording and doing the few edits, then we share it on YouTube. And also for everyone who registered to join this webinar today, you get an email from us um, sharing the slides and the link to the recording of this webinar. So yes, I believe you get it. In fact, let me put the link to our YouTube channel here now so that you can just, you know, Go up there, subscribe. You see a bunch of videos that are already valuable that you can use either for developers or for business people. So yeah, you get the tutorials. Next question here is, all right, so this is a little bit long. So just, so it says, my name is Stanley. Hi, Stanley. And I currently own a platform for bill payments but I had to use another service as I was worried about profit. My confusion is that the documentation says that the commission for other bills except airtime is 30 Naira flat. This is, this is particularly for Nigeria, for Naira. But 30 Naira is less than the flutter with 1.4% fee for amounts ranging from 2,500 and upwards. For example, if someone makes a payment of 5,000 Naira, the flutter with fee, is 17 Naira plus 15 Naira. And the commission is 13 Naira. So how do we make profit? I can almost feel Stanley Spin for continuous business, you have to say. Okay, this is more of a business question than a technical question. So I'll give it um, a very good shot. But mind you, I'm in no position to advise business-wise, right? But one thing we usually see people like Stanley do, especially people who look to offer bill payments as a feature of their product do is they do wallet prefunding. So they don't wait for each transaction to get a bit 1.4%. They prefund your wallet with an amount and then we can use that amount to make the bill payments and then they can charge the customer, right? But Stanley, one thing I know that the team can do for you is you can send an email to Ross. Let's have a deeper conversation because I think this is a conversation you should be having with the business team. But thank you for bringing it up. So yes, Stanley, if you want to reach out to us, you can reach out to us at developers at flutterwavego.com. I think we should go to the next slide. You want to show us the... Yeah, let's so you can reach out to us via the channel. Um, my next question is from Tarek. So Tarek says, can we test electricity or water or TV payments? And does it require a KYC? 
So all features on Flutter require KYC in your onboarding for your account after you sign up, it's always best to, you know, add your KYC so we can take your account live, verify, and know that you have no restrictions with us. But to answer Tarek's question on staging, which is our sandbox, only DSTV can be tested today. And that's because per test, the provider charges us some amount. So it's it's not going to make any economic sense or business sense for us to test that and then put the cost. But like I did in the demo, you can always test with very low amounts on your live environment, maybe with 10 naira, 15 naira, any amount that you're very comfortable with, just to see the full response. And you can check our documentation to see the actual response of what a live call will be. So you can build your own backend to expect that kind of response. So thanks for the question, Tariq. I think these are the best things you can do for now. All right, thank you very much, Cornelius. So we are almost you know, getting to the end. This is 151. So we have nine minutes left. So um, next one is, can I integrate with WordPress WooCommerce? So as of today, some bills are integrated with our WordPress and WooCommerce. I cannot tell which biller exactly has been integrated, but I am aware that some bills have been integrated. So I'll encourage you to check it out. Like I said to a previous question, check it out. If a biller you want is not on there and we currently support that biller, you can reach out to the team I will take a look at it and add it for you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Cornelius. So next one is, thanks for the seminar, sir. Cornelius, yes. sir now. My question is, why is it that it normally takes more time before the merchant got reversal in the case of failed transaction? So I don't know what a long time is in this context, but I do know that we reverse within a reasonably quick period of time. If anyone is not getting a reversal after they've gotten a failed response, they can reach out to the team to let us know so that we can check why that's happening. But ideally, once you get a failed response, Within a couple of minutes, you get a reversal. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Next one is, uh, how do I integrate this on the WordPress platform? Is it Composure I get the service of a developer or it's something I can figure out myself from Moshud? Hi, Moshud. I think I've been getting a lot of WordPress WooCommerce questions. So we have WordPress and WooCommerce plugins that you can integrate directly to your websites. When you go on WooCommerce, you can just search Flutterwave or Rave, and then you see our plugins. You can check out our documentation for the plugin. It's as robust as possible, but feel free to contact the team if you don't understand anything on there. We're more than happy to like jump on a call with you to explain things to get you up and running with your bill payments. Fantastic, thank you. So I guess Moshe is probably not a developer, um, but we will need help. So you can always shout to us, the email address is here, developersofwaterandgo.com. Thank you, Moshe. Uh, this is from Kefa, Kefa Okelo. So I'm guessing Kefa is from somewhere in Eastern Africa, either Kenya or Uganda. And his question is, do you have a sandbox and a collection for the same? If so, do you mind sharing? I think someone has asked this question about collection. So just to recap the answer I gave, yes, we have collections for the APIs that we can share, but you'll need to reach out to the team directly. You can reach out to us either by mail, on Twitter, or join the Slack developer channel and then shoot me a message. 
would respond, will share with you. But you would need to configure your environment yourself and ensure that you're passing the sandbox keys for that environment so that it works as intended. So yes, we have collections, but you need to configure your sandbox environment. So I think Kefa has like a bunch of questions. He also asked here, do you validate cards with three DS? Sorry, I didn't get that question. So, so he, he said, said do, do you, you validate, validate cards, cards with 3DX? 3DS, sorry. So card validation really, really depends on the auth model, but that's another topic on its own. I'm trying not to go out of scope for the purpose of the talk. But to your question, yes, we do. Yes, so there's another question from Kefa. Um, so Kefa says, on the retry, do you retry forever? No, it's unrealistic for you to retry forever. But when you do two retries, you can always reach out to the team to confirm what is going on. Just let us know. I will take a look at that for you. Because ideally, the retry is meant to be one retry, and then you're basically done. You're basically done with the bill call once you get a success response for the second or the second attempt, which is retry. So you're not expected to retry forever. Just retry once or twice at max, and then you can reach out to the team and we'll take a look and resolve for you. So I'm going to take all of Kefa's, Kefa's questions before uh, we wrap this up. So Kefa asks here again, have you ever encountered a double credit to Bila? I don't know if that's clear. Have you ever encountered a double credit to Bila? A double credit to Bila? I, I really don't have context on what Kefa is saying. I hope I pronounced your name correctly, but we only debit per attempt, right? And that's the reason why when I was talking about what you do when the status is failed is for you to actually confirm that that debit was reversed before you retry. Even if you retry, we would, you know, reverse the first debit. But it's always best practice to ensure that this fund is back in the event of you having very low balance to ensure you can actually process the bill payment you intend for. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much, Cornelius. So um, Kefa's last question says, have you, sorry, on the card integration, do you support 3DS enabled cards? I think that one was about validating. I think that one is about you know supporting 3DS enabled cards. Sorry, I didn't get that question. Can so, you do you on, 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 on the, the card, card integration, do you support 3DS enabled cards? Yes, yes, we do. All right. So, next question is from okay, anonymous attendee. Um, thank you for your efforts and explanation. My questions, please have network instability. Can I have a copy of the, yes, this is, this is being recorded at the moment. So you get it in your inbox in your email, via email very soon. Um, how, safe is a, how safe is applying code on, applying this code on static website? Take how, how safe is applying this code on static website? Well, I wouldn't advise you to implement this on a static website unless you're thinking about, this wouldn't even work on a static website to begin with, right? You have a static page, a form, but you would need a backend to make these API calls for you. So I wouldn't suggest you do it on a static website because of the need to implement um, the APIs on your backend. Okay, thank you, Cornelius. Um, next is 
Okay, I think Iman is probably clarifying one of, one of his previous questions and he said, um, I meant payment gateway is not the API. So I meant the API, can we use the Flutter with payment gateways for free to charge our customers while using your APIs? I think that's the same thing, yeah? Yes. The gateway is powered by our APIs. So yes, the answer is yes. And he, and he has another question here. Uh, also, what are the best, what are your best rates for airtime and data API? I didn't really hear the last question. Okay, okay. let me take it again. Uh, um, what, are, what are your best rates for airtime and data API? Rates. Yes. yes. I, I don't think there are rates in this context. Exactly. So the person would need to maybe reach out after the webinar so he can like explain the context of the question better. But with the context of bill payments, we just talk in terms of fees and commission, right? Commissions go back to the, <clears throat> excuse me, commissions go back to the merchants, right? And then the fees, we send that to our providers. So if the person can just share more context on rates so we can address this question, that would be really helpful. All right, so um, what's your charging charging fee for each transaction? So that depends on the pillar and the bill type. I would encourage the person asking this question to just go to the get um, bill category, pick a category, and spool everything and check the fee structure there so we can have a really detailed understanding on how the fees are structured. Okay, next one is, um, I noticed on the Butter app, we don't need to put in our network. Can the API automatically validate network from just the phone number? So with Butter, one thing the person asking this question should know is that they are not calling the API directly. There are a lot of wrapping before the API is being called, a lot of, you know, UX or DX in this case, a lot of DX efforts has gone into making that product what it is. So you can call the APIs, but create a bit of overlay between what your user is sending to you and what you are sending to the API. So once you can figure out how this would work for you, in the better example, I would imagine they were doing something like, you know, calling the validates customer ID, and then from there, they pick either the network from the response, and then they use the network to pick the biller type. So all that would happen at the back end without the customers knowing. So you can also replicate this in your application, it's fine for you to do that. All you need to know is for the APIs, they have requirements, they need certain parameters. As long as you're passing these parameters, you're fine. All right, so we've gone over time. Um, we'll just quickly rush through these questions. We have about five left. So please, no more questions after now. After the last question here is from Kefa. So after this last question by Kefa, you might have to reach out to us via Slack or um, via email to you and tell you questions because of time. All right, thank you very much. So from Kunle, Kunle said, anytime I try to use WooCommerce plugin on WordPress, they, they normally ask me to upgrade my site to paid plan before I could be able to use the plugin. Can't we use plugin on free plan on WordPress? Yes, you can. I would imagine the reason why WooCommerce is asking you to upgrade is because maybe you have another plugin that requires the updates. But to my knowledge, I know a lot of websites that run on our WordPress plugin and they're all on free plan. So you might just need to check your existing plugins and see which one is causing that issue. 
once you can resolve it, you can then reinstall a WooCommerce plugin and then set it up. All right, so next question very quickly. What is the most paid be used on your platform? So I didn't catch that. What is the most paid paid be used? The most paid or the most used? Most paid. Most paid. Oh. So that would be at times. I think the airtime markets in Nigeria and in the markets we service is very large compared to the other bill types. So we have a lot of developers, enterprise merchants, small businesses running on our airtime bill service. All right, thank you. So um, commissions rather than, so you might say commissions rather than, what are your best commissions for the airtime and data API? Once again, this is another business question. It's best you reach out to the team so we can have a detailed conversation about this. There's no way I can go into answering this on the webinar and would have time to take other questions. So whosoever is asking this question, thank you for the question. It's a really good one. Reach out to the team. Um, I can promise you one thing that we always have time to talk to the um, developers. We're always here for our merchants and we would have that conversation and see that we can give you an answer that you can work with and implement. Next question here is, how can we add tax on the payout? Because that's how it charges 1.4% of each transaction. So please tell me how. So this is another business question, right? <laughs> it's a business question. Um, Flutterwave allows customers to mark up fees, right? And when I mean customers, I'm referring to merchants in this case, because you are our customers. We allow you to mark up fees. If you would need to understand what that would entail or how that would work, you would need to reach out to the team so we can talk and advise you on how best you can mark up so that at the end of the day, the marks add up in your favor as a business. All right, thank you, Cornelius. This is the last question, because I remember saying that after Kefa's question, we won't take other questions. Or maybe we can. So Kefa's question says, in Kenya, have you thought of integrating with mobile money? It's quite popular. I know this is more business oriented. So mobile money in Kenya as a collection method, yes, that has been integrated. We support investor collections in Kenya at the moment. So the bill payments exactly are another leg of the transaction. The first leg would involve, you know, the merchants or the developer collecting those funds from the user in the first place. So I would imagine the user has an account on the app and I've either added my card or I've added my mobile phone number so you can charge me. And then after charging me, you can then proceed to initiate or execute the bill payment. So to the person's question of integrating with mobile money, on the collections end of this flow, we have integrated with mobile money in East Africa across the markets we're present in. So you can try that out, head to our documentation, check out how you can play around with a couple of values, especially with the mobile money and see how that flow works. So I encourage you to do that. 